Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Planning and Development Management Committee, the 17th of November, 2021. Um, Danny, do we have any welcome, um, any in, uh, apologies, sorry? Uh, yes, can be. we just have the one apology from Councillor James and Councillor Hearn is substituting today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Way. I'm sorry, I'll give you your Sunday name for the rest of the committee. My apologies for coming in with your Christian name. Um, allow me to introduce the top table to everyone that's uh, um, here today. We have um, Councillor Bob Ron, who is the Vice Convener of the Committee, Mr Christian Smith, the Development Management and Building Standards Service Manager, Morning. Mr Jeff Fogg is our Legal Manager, and Mr Danny Williams from Committee Services. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of the usual housekeeping that I state right at the beginning, but I'm asking members to remind you if, it, if at any point you uh, lose connection to the committee, can you please notify uh, us on the group chat um, that we'll be using today and uh, it will be up to yourself to, to take into consideration whether you have missed um, enough or any salient points in the committee if it goes to a vote. Also, as I say, I'm using the chat function, so can you use that to attract my attention? Uh, we've been doing this for over a year now, so I'm sure everybody's well versed in what to do with that. And if I could now ask Mr. Williams to do a roll call of everyone that's here, please. Yes, thank you, convener. Um, so, uh, usual uh, procedure here, members, just when I call your name, you can let me know whether you're present. Um, we'll go to our sub-councillor Hearn. Present. Thank you. Councillor Barnacle. Present. Councillor Braun. Present. Councillor Brock. Present. Councillor Gray. Present. Councillor Illingworth. Present. Uh, convener, we've heard from yourself, so Councillor McEwen. Present. Councillor Reid. Present. Councillor Simpson. Present. Councillor Waters. Present. Councillor Williamson. Present, sorry, present. No, it's thanks, Councillor Williamson. And Councillor Wilson. Present. Thank you very much. So that's uh, everyone who should be here uh, is present convener. Thank you, Mr. Williams, and uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask the committee, do we have any declarations of interest for the application in front of us today? If you do, could you put a DI in the chat box for me now? Councillor Gray, you have a question? Yes, yeah, question for Mr. Fogg. Uh, as I was not present at the last meeting when uh, item 521 was considered, uh, should I participate or not in any further action on that application? Uh, I'll go to Mr Fogg in a second if that's OK, but th that's the, regarding the uh, information coming forward as a verbal update. Um, I don't see any reason for the verbal update for you not to be included in that, uh, Councillor Gray, but uh, Mr Fogg, could you give any uh, additional clarification on that? Um. Without wanting to be opaque, Councillor uh, Gray, if you would um, allow Christian Gray to give an update in relation to that item, I think that will remove completely the 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 need for you to ask that question further. So if you just bear with us uh, for a few more minutes, all will become clear. Thank you very much. I hope that was the case. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, then in that case, obviously, uh, if there is still a, a, an issue with declarations of interest at that point, uh, after that update, then I'll take that into consideration. But um, I, I, we could continue with that and actually have the update. That we'll see where we are from there. Um, and I can take it from that that there is no um, declarations of interest on the other application in front of us. So thank you. Um, because this has just been mentioned, uh, could I seek the committee's um, agreement to have that verbal update before the application? Uh, does the committee, um, would, they, would they be so inclined to allow that? Agreed. 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 Thank you very much. 
Okay, um, so I'll continue with the other procedure, but uh, there's no declarations of interest. Um, there's also no deputations uh, coming forward today, so uh, we don't need agreement for that. And uh, that moves us on to item number four on the agenda, which is minutes of the um, previous Planning and Development Management Committee on the 20th of October. So do we have an agreement from the committee that they are a true and accurate reflection of the meeting? Agreed. 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 Thank you, committee. And uh, again, I think this is a sensible point because it was in the previous meeting. So I would now ask Mr. Fisher Smith to deliver the verbal update um, on the previously considered application. Thank you. Yes, thank you, convener. And just as a reminder, uh, this relates to planning application 21 oblique 00940 oblique FLL which was the change of use and alterations from agricultural buildings to form eight holiday accommodation units, erection of three holiday accommodation units, a utility building, formation of access roads, car parking, drainage and associated works at West Gormack Farm, Kinlich Gowrie. So members will recall that our application was deferred by the last committee with a request that it be re-presented at a later date, along with information related to Firstly, access and road safety matters, particularly the potential for additional passing places. And second, that the submitted business plan be made available to members of the committee such that they could further consider the economic benefits of the proposal alongside possible input from Scottish Agricultural College. However, following the committee, officers were notified on the 2nd of November that the applicant had exercised their right to appeal the Council's non-determination of the application and as such, the proposals are now being considered by the Planning and Environmental Appeals Division of the Scottish Government, known as DPEA. It will now be for the DPEA to reconsider afresh the application of whether they have sufficient information, which should include the content and outcome of the committee, or if they require further detail, interested parties will be contacted by the DPEA in due course. Now, as a further clarification for members of the committee, and I understand that some questions have been asked in relation to the appeal process, taking the two questions I'm aware of. First, it has been asked if the time available for the council to make a decision on the application was affected by the outcome of the committee. On this, I would just clarify that there is a standard period during which planning authorities can hold applications before application, uh, applicants have a right of appeal if no determination has been made. That period for a local type of application is eight weeks. It is, however, possible for the planning authority to agree an extension of the consideration period with applicants. In this case, the allotted period had expired and the applicant did not wish to extend the period and exercise their right to appeal on non-determination grounds. So hopefully that answers that question. Second question I'm aware of is a further query asking if this committee can still make a decision on the application. However, I must advise it's now the case that the application sits with the DPEA and no longer with Perth and Kinross Council, and it is only DPA who can make a decision on it. They may, however, make inquiries to interested parties asking for comment or further information. So again, I hope that clarifies that point. Thank you, convener. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, we have a, a question arising from that update uh, from Councillor Wilson. Your question, please, sir. Thanks, convener. Thanks to Mr. Smith for the, for the update. Um, my question is, will the reporter in due course have the availability of at least asking for the information that we as a committee asked for at the last meeting? Because it, it's a, 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 given that the committee asked for it, I would regard it as a material consideration. I think, as I had said, that the, the reporter will have access to all the relevant information uh, and that will include the content and outcome of the committee, I think, is, is what I had said. The, the um, committee meeting itself is on YouTube. Uh, there will be the minute that we've just approved, uh, but it will be for the reporter to decide whether or not they have enough information uh, or whether they wish more whatever that may be. Yeah. Convener, I could ask a supplementary? Certainly. Thank you. Would that include the, the right of the reporter to, to request the, the business plan and uh, additional information on traffic and road safety as per our previous decision, if the reporter were so minded to ask for that information? 
Uh, I'm going to come in. I believe that is the yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just going to, yeah, that is the case. Uh, Mr. Smith, if you want to do that. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, the, the, as I say, the the reporter can ask for whatever information he feels is necessary, uh, and that may include, if he feels it is necessary, uh, access to the business plan uh, and or any further information in relation to road safety. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Say I did receive a couple of questions, but they have been answered in Mr. Smith's uh, verbal update. So uh, past that uh, has already been been mentioned. OK, thank you very much indeed for that. So that then brings us on to the uh, application in front of us today, which is a local application. Um, it is an erection of a dwelling house on land southwest of Green Parks Church Road in Crook of Devon. And again, over to Mr. Smith to speak to the report. Thank you. Thank you again, convener. Uh, now, I'll now take members through a presentation of both plans and various photographic images. Um, in summary, the application itself seeks detailed planning permission for a single house located just to the south of Crooked Devon and accessed off Church Road, which is a private road. The application is in effect a renewal or replication of a planning permission granted in 2014, but which was not commenced and expired in 2017, although the current submission sees enhanced drainage arrangements reflecting concerns raised about surface water issues in the wider locality. These new measures designed to control any runoff from the driveway to the access track. So now turning to the first image, which is an aerial photo highlighting in red the location of the site. As can be seen, it sits between two existing houses on the south side of Church Road. As I said, that access road is private and unadopted, but forms part of the core path network. Church Road leads east to St Serfs Road and Crook of Devon and also west allowing access to the A977. To the north is a field across which are residential properties within Crook of Devon on West Crook Way. The inset to the top right shows the immediate surroundings in a larger image. The relationship with the existing houses on either side can perhaps be more clearly seen. Next, this here we see the plot layout and the location of the property Beach Grove to the west. Unfortunately, the new property to the east is not plotted, uh, this drawing dating back to that earlier planning permission. The new access through the existing stone wall would be constructed largely using material reclaimed from the section of wall removed. Next slide. Here we see a drainage plan showing how surface water associated to the development would be managed. You will note that a drainage channel and associated soak away would serve the driveway. This is in addition to the soak away extent required within the rear garden associated to the house. Next slide, elevations. Here we see the, to the north towards Church Street and south elevations. The north seeing dormers and a two storey projecting gable framing the entrance. The south also seeing dormers and a projecting wing, which has a covered balcony at first floor facing south. Then we see images of the east and west sides in the main windows and doors are not located in the gables closest to the boundaries with only a single window at first floor level in the east elevation, which is some distance from the plot boundary. We now move to a series of recent photos which seek to show the context of the surroundings. Next still please. The first photo is taken from the private access road known as Church Road at point northeast of the site and at the junction with a south leading track adjacent to the house known as Green Parks. It's looking towards the junction with St Serfs Road with the property known as Dulfade in the right foreground. Next still please. This photo is again taken from close to that junction, this time looking west towards the site, which is 80 metres further down on the left. The property known as Green Parks is in the left foreground. Next still. This photo looks north towards Church Road from within the adjacent plot along the post and wire fence defining the east boundary. That plot being the newly constructed house, the lawn is associated to that property. Next still. Here we see the north boundary onto and taken from Church Road where the opening is to be formed in the stone wall. The trees are to be retained. Next still please. 
So next we look towards the south boundary, also defined by a post and wire fence, which then continues along the rear of the property to the west, known as Beach Grove. And the final still, here we look across the site towards the west boundary with Beach Grove, which is defined by a mix of stone walling and planting along its boundary. Thank you, convener. That concludes the presentation and we return to the site layout. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Smith. Um, not to bring up another but interesting potholes, but anyway. Um, right, so we open it up to questions for officers. Um, so I can see that Councillor Barnacle is, is very quick off the mark there. And you have three questions, Councillor Barnacle. Happy for you to say all three at this time, since there's no other questions coming forward. So uh, could you do them separately? Number one, we'll get an answer and we'll go from there for you, sir. Thank you. Question one, please. Yeah, thanks very much, convener. And uh, within my questions, perhaps a little bit of local information. First of all, on question one, um, which I'll come to. First of all, I share the concerns of the community council in relation to access and flooding and the commentary over intensive development in the representations, but only in relation to the wider building group the potential for further development in paddock areas and not this single house, which I accept is an infill site. So I'm on paragraph 34 for officers and the map on page 19, which I think are somewhat inaccurate. It refers to a recently built dwelling. I'd like to know when was permission granted for this huge mansion to the southeast not west of the site, uh, which dominates the other properties, which I don't recall coming to committee. And locals were amazed when what I perceive as a three story got built. I failed to see how this complied with policy 19 when I thought the only house we were going to get was the one in 2012 approved. That's the first question. Mm -mm. OK, um, and I'll certainly put that forward, but we, we do have an application in front of us. So am I right in thinking, Councillor Barnacle, your first question is regarding a property that's not in front of us today? Yes, it's in relation to the wider building group and okay. the, yes, the wider building group, yeah. OK, um, well, we'll see if we can get an answer to that. Um, I'm not sure if you've got that information to hand, but um, Mr Smith, do you have that information? I, I don't have that information to hand other than I'm aware that it was granted a number of years ago and there will be a report of handling and all the information available on the council website as to the way in which that application was handled and the outcome of it and I can certainly pass that to Councillor Barnacle in due course. Yes, thank you for that, Mr Smith. I, I, that's why I was questioning, uh, unfortunately, Councillor Barnacle, because not wouldn't have necessarily have that information to hand considering it's not regarding the application in front of us. So I'm sorry that you've not got a, a precise detailed answer, but as I say, it wouldn't be something that officers would bring. Um, we can certainly get that to you. Yeah, thanks, convener. I only, I only mentioned it in the context of it was mentioned in the report, if you see what I mean. Okay. okay, thank you. Your second question, please. Well, I disagree with the Roads Department, paragraph 43, on the suitability of the single track road. Uh, to serve uh, further development. I wonder if the Roads Department are aware that Green Parks is a business operated by the Garage Door Company with several vans coming and going on a regular basis. I would also point out that there is no such legal agreement that exists, as far as I'm aware, for maintenance between the users. So I'm questioning the assertion that it is not a planning issue. Surely development management are exacerbating the issue by sanctioning the recently built house aforementioned and now recommending this one for approval, which is a standalone decision. And the road is not suitable for PKC. Sorry, Councillor Barnacle, I'm going to. I'm trying to give you leniency, but you're. You, you, we've got questions for officers at this point. With the greatest of respect, I know you're trying to give local information, but can we have questions for officers, please? Well, okay then. If the roads department are saying it is totally suitable for further development, 
and it is not suitable for PKC adoption. I was going to come to this in my third question because it's related. Um, I don't think we can add a condition from previous discussions with uh, Christian. Um, but would it be possible in relation to the access road to put in an informative that instructs the applicant to explore with neighbours the provision of an agreement to maintain the access track and culvert the end of Church Road to solve this ongoing problem, which I was going to mention in my third question, because the core path in winter floods across the whole of the track. OK, um, sorry, to, to my understanding, there, Councillor Barnacle, that, that's sort of two questions, one regarding the roads um, and one regarding flooding to a certain extent. Um, so, well, I want to Ms. McLean, yeah. if you could come in on the road side of it, please, and see if we could, could answer the, the question. Thank you, um, convener. Um, regarding the, the the first question there um, about the adoption of the the private access, um, in its current form, um, I wouldn't see that being um, up to an adoptable standard. Um, but should the residents along there wish it to be adopted and it was brought up to an adoptable standard, um, we could certainly look at um, the adoption of that private road. And Mr. That's Smith, you would like to uh, add a comment to this, or, or come back on the second part of the question, please. Yeah, the, the, the same question, I think, maybe just clarifying, was can an informative be added to any decision uh, which would encourage the applicant to explore maintenance of the access road with other parties? Um, well, to an extent, yes, it could, but there would be no control available via that uh, or no requirement for them to do anything. Um, so it's it's whether or not that was felt appropriate. Uh, perhaps Mr Fogg can give some comment on that. Mr Fogg, are you, uh, do you have any comment to, to make to that part? Uh, um, I, th I think it would be open to the committee to add an informative um, um, along the lines that Councillor Barnacle was seeking. Um, it's, I think I understood both but by the committee and as stated by Christian there that it's not binding on the applicant, but we could it would be open to the committee to have an informative encouraging the applicant to uh, consider options for further and better maintenance of the access road if it, if it so resolved. OK, does, does that answer your, your questions, Councillor Barnacle? Yes, I want to start thinking on flooding, but it's I would be keen for the informative to be added if the committee were to agree. And, and secondly, the information on potential adoption of a single track road. I wasn't aware that we did that, but I'm happy to hear that that is an option. That's useful information. Thank you. Can I come to the third point then? <clears throat> Um, sorry, I thought you'd asked your questions, but yes, your third question, if that's on flooding, and, and then we, we do have other questions coming forward. So your, your next point, please. Uh, Reflooding. Um, I've personally visited and had meetings with residents of West Crook Way relating to the flooding that, of their houses and the need for sandbags, both to the north of the site, since the water pipe for the recently built house was put in across the Glebe field. Note the Scottish water comment and at the narrow access at the end of Church Road and was not surprised when the flood team objected, para 47. This remains an issue. Whilst I accept the paragraphs on this 47 to 50, so would it not, and that brings me to the informative again. The informative is basically to explore the uh, maintenance of the track, but also possible culverting to alleviate the potential for further flooding. I think actually um, if if that informative can include both points, then that answers my question, but I wasn't clear it did. 
because I hadn't asked that. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, and yeah, difficult for us to uh, answer a question you hadn't asked yet. So fine, uh, Mr. Bissett, could you come back in on um, the sort of flooding concerns, and then maybe if Mr. Fogg could come back in again on whether that uh, additional um, point could be put to the informative. I'm assuming it would be the same answer to the last one, but I, it would just be good to have your clarity. Thank you. Certainly, thanks, convener. Um, in terms of the, the flooding issues. Um, I'm aware personally of the issues. I've met Councillor Barnacle out on site and had a walk over, uh, so understand the, the concerns in the area. Um, the site itself is uh, not deemed to be a significant factor in that flooding issue, um, and the, the drainage that has been proposed um, as part of the application is, meets our standards and is suitable, plus the additional, the, the driveway is going to be a permeable construction plus the applicants agreed to put in additional drainage measures on top of that to ensure that any additional runoff that might might occur in intense events is also captured and stopped from entering onto the the private access road and the wider issue is related to the access road and the lack of drainage um, but that would be a matter for the the owner of the road to to address um, and I think that would also interlink with the previous question around um, the, the adoptable standard of the, the road and things around adoption. Um, you also mentioned about culverting uh, to reduce uh, flood risk. I assume you mean the, the small channel uh, west of uh, Church Road uh, that runs west to east um, that does sometimes spill over. Um, culverting typically just creates a, a capacity issue um, and and probably would create another flooding issue. Um, so it's not an advisable um, sort of approach to sort of managing issues. Um, but again, the issues associated with that small channel is down to the landowner to, to consider um, and it's probably out with the, the scope of this um, application. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Fogg. Um, if you could just come back in for clarity, could uh, additional um, a, an additional part as per Mr. Um, sorry, as per Councillor Barnacle's request on the flooding be added to the informative? Yeah, it, it could, convener. Lovely. Thank you for that clarity. Okay, hopefully that uh, answers uh, Councillor Barnacle's questions. Councillor Wilson, you're next, and then Councillor Williamson. Convener, thank you. I too have three points, but. Um, they're one-liners, um, and I'll try to be as succinct as possible. Um, Thank you. Uh, page 13 in the report, part of 53, um, with a low and low and zero carbon um, section. Um, I understand there's a revision of the building regulations. Will that change that condition, um, that paragraph or condition four at all? Is my first point. Okay. I believe that would be Mr Smith. No, it wouldn't. The, the policy requires that there is a percentage uh, gain in relation to whatever the building standards are at the time. OK, th thank you. Um, in relation to this application, is there anything in LDP2 that makes it a material difference in terms of the application? And I can combine these two points together, I think. Um, the paragraph two says there's some small design and other changes in the plans. Um, could we have a, a, just a couple of lines of detail on that, please? <laughs> Again, I believe that's to yourself, Mr Smith. Yeah, uh, well, as, as I've sort of outlined, Primarily that relates to the enhanced drainage arrangements. That's that's really the thing that you would notice that is different, that they have provided additional drainage in relation to the drain uh, the driveway. And with regard to the LDP um, two question. Oh, apologies. No, no, there's no change of material effect. Uh, there's slightly different wordings uh, because plans have changed, but in terms of the effect of the plan on the consideration of this application, no. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Uh, Councillor Williamson, your questions, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, convener. I have several questions. Uh, the first one, and I don't seem to be able to, to see an answer for this, is 
is the sewage system that the, the, the house is proposing to connect to, is that also a combined wastewater uh, sewage uh, pipeline? I'm assuming Mr. Smith again. Um, Apologies, I was still writing down what, what Councillor Wilson had said. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Councillor uh, Williamson, do you want to repeat your question? Uh, yes. Um, it's essentially, is the sewage water pipe um, a combined sewage waste water pipeline that runs outside the house? My understanding on that is that it's uh, not a combined system. Uh, that there is surface water drainage dealt with via the various uh, soakaways and things that we've spoken about. Okay, and and so so therefore there's no concerns about capacity and the requirement for maybe one-way valves or or when when the operator is at a Scottish water issue. Yeah, the, the, there's no indication of any capacity issue. Okay, um, the surface water treatment that, that's mentioned in the papers. Uh, I'm assuming that's that's going to conform to a Scottish water standard and um, so, so therefore Scottish water could adopt that surface water treatment at some point in the future. Uh, yes. To Mr. Bissett on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to do that, Mr. Bissett, if you could uh, if you could answer that, please. Uh, yeah, the the surface water system is a private system, um, so it will be maintained um, by the by the the owner of the property. Um, it's all all surface water will be contained and dealt with on site, um, and and so it's it'll remain private. In terms of provision of sort of treatment and things for single dwellings, there's not actually any legal requirement for that. But the proposals that they brought forward does provide an element of treatment, and it's all going to ground. Um, so there's there's no concerns and and no requirement for Scotch water to be uh, to be looking at the, the detail of that. Yeah, but, but my question was, is is, it, is is that surface water treatment going to be of an, uh, a Scottish water standard? It's actually above Scottish water standards because they're providing surface water storage um, and the size. They're basically, the, the, the design is up to a 200 year um, rainfall event, um, which is higher than the Scottish water standard. Um, but as this, as I've highlighted, this is a private system, doesn't connect to any public drainage, so it, it wouldn't be necessary for it to be to Scottish water standards, but it complies with the, the council's uh, required standards. Uh, so, so potentially in, in, in years to come, potentially the, the uh, Scottish water could actually adopt this, this surface water treatment if it was deemed necessary at some point in the future. Uh, they wouldn't adopt it because it's all contained within the cartilage of the property. So it's, there's none of it in the public uh, domain. Um, so there'd be no avenue for Scottish Water to, to adopt it. Mr Smith, you have an additional point to make on that? Yeah, just, maybe just clarifying. In effect, what happens with surface water, it's directed into the, the, the channels and soakaways within the plot and then will percolate away naturally. It doesn't then transfer uh, to any system or pipework, etc., out with the plot. Okay, um, the air air brick intakes uh, that that surround the property. Uh, have, have, has any mention been made about those about uh, raising the heights of them for, for, uh, to to mitigate any potential surface flooding that may may take place on the building? Uh, Mr. Bissett, first, if you could come in on that, and then Mr. Smith. Thank you. Uh, it's not been deemed necessary to go into the detail of that because there's no the, this, the wider surface water issue in the area doesn't affect this uh, this site directly. Um, it's pretty standard that air brick um, or thresholds into properties are are elevated, but there's no um, specific uh, risk uh, at this property that that meant we we considered that in detail. Um, essentially. Uh, that that's that's the position on that one. Okay. okay um, Mr. S sorry, Mr. Uh, Councillor Williamson, Mr. Smith would also like to come in. Yeah, maybe, maybe just clarifying two things. Uh, firstly, that the site in itself has no history or indication of of surface water flooding to any extent. The the local uh, incidences of that are quite some distance uh, from the the site itself, 
so there's no indication that there's any risk of any significant surface water flooding issue within the site. So there's no uh, proportionate reason to control or require that there is any enhanced arrangements in relation to uh, air intakes uh, and the standard building regulations would kick in at that point. OK, uh, I mean, the, the, the rationale behind my questioning, uh, Mr Smith and Mr Bizet, is, is that when you start building some of these sites, you do um, hit old field drains, etc, and that can di divert the water course sometimes, and that, that's that's the rationale behind my, my question. And it was uh, just one, one question also about the seals around the edges of the house. Uh, are, are they watertight so, or, 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 or uh, permeable to, to allow ingress into beneath the house? Mr Smith, if you could come in on that, please. Yeah, again, that's a building warrant matter, so not something that we would be considering at the planning stage unless there was clear evidence that would indicate that there is a, a reasonable extent of, of flood risk associated to the site. Uh, and as we've indicated, there there is no clear flood risk associated to the site at all. In okay. fact, you know, surface water would be dealt with beyond the standard required. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can I just ask before we go, Councillor Wilson has put forward that he would like to uh, move, um, but I want to just double check with the committee that there's no more questions before we do to that. There are no more questions coming up on the chat box. So, Councillor Wilson, you would um, put forward the motion. It, th thanks, convener. And I, I was maybe slightly premature there, but I thought the, the questions had actually been answered. But um, Councillor Williamson had another one. Um, I, I want to move approval of the, the report and the application, but with the addition of the two informatives that Councillor Barnacle has, a, uh, with his local knowledge, uh, and that's good to have that, um, to be, they be included within the the, the 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 report of handling and would be as part of the, of the implementation of the approval. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Do we have a second? I am happy to do that, um, but I always like to give a, a chance to the committee. Well, I'll do it then. OK, <laughs> I am more than happy to second that. Um, um, I can see the questions have been well answered. Yes, Councillor Barnacle. I had to put in a second. There, I would second Councillor Wilson. Just, uh, I think you've missed it. Yeah. I don't have anything from you coming up on the chat, um, which is interesting because I had you coming up earlier. But anyway, not a problem. If you would like to second, please go ahead. Yes, I would. But I'm wondering if Councillor Wilson would include in the informative an additional point which came from the Roads Department that there is potential to explore. PKC adoption as well. So in other words, they seek to uh, broker an agreement to maintain the track and deal with flooding issue, uh, but also explore the potential for PKC adoption. I'm just wondering if that would be acceptable to Councillor Wilson and would be OK. <clears throat> Convener, I'd be happy to accept that, but we need to make sure that it's first of all enforceable. It's, it's a laudable objective, Councillor Barnacle, given the photographs in your report of local knowledge. Um, but um, uh, would that be uh, Mr Fogg's advice, please? Or yeah, I'm going advice? to. Is that appropriate? Yeah. And if so, I'd be happy to include it. OK, well, well, before we go to Mr Fogg, um, I mean, I, I, our officers know exactly what they're doing when they're coming to informative. So um, uh, from my understanding, you're looking for an informative to be added that the, the, that the officers will, will word and put together that will, will hopefully, because obviously when, when it comes to the adoption of the road, it has to come up to a certain standard and those that, that will be involved. So I don't want to hand tie um, the, the whole process because then we'll get nowhere, as Councillor Wilson said. So uh, Mr Fogg, could you, you, could you just clarify it? My understanding is that the informatives are regarding um, the, the road, <laughs> um, are regarding um, the, the, the everybody getting together to, to, to keep the road uh, as good as possible. And sorry, what was the final one, Councillor uh, Council Michael? Uh, and explore the potential for PKC adoption. OK, Councillor, um, Mr Falk, if you could just confirm that, please. 
Yes, uh, Kavina, I, I thought, uh, as I understand it from having listened this morning, I, I thought there were three matters now. There was uh, the, the private you. road in terms of its maintenance, separately mm -hmm. to investigate the possibility of it being brought up to an adoptable standard uh, by the Roads Authority. And um, uh, lastly, also um, to further investigate the scope for uh, additional mitigation of um, uh, surface water um, flooding. On, on that access road. Um, That's correct. That's what, correct. What I was uh, would recommend is that if we, if the committee understand those three uh, general areas, uh, I wonder if Christian and I could be given uh, the authority to um, uh, come up with the precise word, wording after the committee and to liaise perhaps with uh, the the Councillor Barnacle and Councillor Wilson to confirm that we've correctly uh, reflected what they were seeking in the wording rather than trying doing it on the hoof right now. Um, I, th I think I, I understand what they're seeking to do, but it, it might benefit from some calmer consideration uh, at a later date, which I'm sure won't be contentious and it would be helpful to have confirmation from Councillor Barnacle and Councillor Wilson afterwards that we properly reflected their uh, their concerns, if that was okay. agreed to both you and the committee. Well, um, can I just come in on that? Um, I'm, I'm more than happy with that as long as the rest of the committee get to, to see what, what has been uh, agreed. But I, I do want to stress just, just a point that, you know, we are we are putting on an application um, for an applicant who doesn't own or have any control over what we're discussing now. Um, so we, we need to be understanding and have recognizance that um, these informants are laudable and, and are, are, I'm happy for them to go to go forward but we have to be aware that the applicant isn't in control of making them happen to a full degree um, and it is it is a lot to ask to put that on one particular um, applicant when actually it's uh, it's for the whole um, area to take on board. Um, Councillor Wilson, you have a comment, and I'm happy to come in with that. But can I just, before we do, have agreement from Councillor Wilson and Barnacle that they're happy with Mr. Fogg's um, uh, suggestion, and then I'll ask the committee if they're also happy. Yes, for me. Great. Okay. Um, before we go to the comments coming forward, is the committee happy that that is done after the effect and then distributed round? Could, be. Could I make my comment forward slash question first, uh, convener? Uh, yeah, we passed question section, but go for it. Well, well, it, it's it's essentially on the back of this, but my my concern is is by imposing uh, bringing this road up to adoptable standard, that would put a place a financial burden on not only the, this planning application but also uh, neighbouring properties who who have cartilage on, onto that road or use of that road. Um, along possibly with the, the owners of that road. So uh, I was just wanting clarity on that. Are, are we allowed to, as part of this application, put a financial burden onto uh, other properties? Mr Fogg, I think I'll, I'll need to be you to come in on that. Kavir, uh, uh, um, it's an important point uh, that the committee needs to be clear on, uh, happy to restate it. Uh, it's not uh, within the gift of, uh, it's not within the power of this committee to make any such uh, imposition uh, on this applicant. Um, what's being proposed here is merely aspirational uh, that the applicant um, investigates uh, or, or considers um, for reasons that are previously given, uh, it would not be competent to uh, make such an obligation uh, binding upon the applicant. So that's not going to happen. It's merely encouraging him to consider with the other parties whether this is uh, possible. That's as far as it can be taken. It wouldn't be competent to do any more than that. This is purely aspirational. Yes, thank you. Um, Mr Smith, you I want to add to that and then we'll go to Councillor Simpson who has a comment. Yeah, I, I think Jeff pretty much covered it that you know we can add these informatives, uh, but they are simply saying we'd like you to look at this, uh, but the choice will be for the applicant whether they wish to do that or not. Yeah, thank you. Um, Councillor Simpson, your comment. Thank you very much indeed, convener. I, I just really wanted to say in relation to uh, the problems of privately maintained roads and adoption, I, I live in one myself and, and I put a lot of my grey hairs down to that. Um, it's, it's, it's an absolute minefield, that's not just the surface of the road. Um, 
And uh, I think the danger we have here is we're straying very much from that from matter in hand. And you're asking people in some cases to, to put tens of thousands of pounds into roads to bring them up to an adoptable standard. This isn't just have a nice a nice road that you can drive up and down, that there's all the drainage and all the other aspects. And, and I really feel that whilst it might be a good idea for all roads to be an adoptable standard, I, I'm not sure it's within the remit of this committee. And I'm certainly not sure it has anything to do with this particular planning application, whether it be a good idea or not. Um, and I don't think it's for this committee to offer people helpful planning advice on how they spend their, their, their pensions, you know. Um, it is a very expensive thing we're asking people to do, and I think perhaps it should be dealt with um, separately from this particular uh, planning application. And it's perhaps a matter for another committee to look at making the system for doing so, a system for, for assisting residents much, much easier to navigate. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for your, your comment, Councillor Simpson. Um, it, it is a comment and, and I do take that on board. Um, it's as I've already said, we have an application in front of us. It's not up to us as a, a planning committee to uh, to do anything that is out with their, their remit. But I do accept that we are also in the position as the uh, Planning and Development Committee to, to try and move the process towards an end goal. And, and the end goal is that people maybe work together a little bit more and there is recognizes between one building site and one application to, to the surroundings. Um, so I accept what you're saying, Councillor Simpson, but I think as an informative, as, as it is only an informative, I think we, we're OK in doing that. And if the committee is still in agreement that this is done after the effect and we all get um, an idea of the wording, we're at least all aware of what the position is. This is not enforceable, but it is a, an aspiration, as that has already been said by uh, Mr Smith. Uh, we've had agreement from the um, the mover of the the motion and from the secondary so um, and the committee. So, um, can I ask, is there an amendment to this application? Back to uh, to track. No. So, as there is no amendment, um, the the motion is passed. Thank you very much indeed. We approve the application with the uh, the. Uh, the additional information that, that will be decided after the committee. So thank you very much indeed committee for your time and as there is no uh, other applications in front of us today I wish you all a happy Wednesday.